Well, hello, 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 and welcome back. I hope you're all fit and well. Look, today I thought I'd just give you a few uh, hints on how to use your tripod properly um, when you're out and about in the landscape or for any type of um, photography, for that matter, if you're using a tripod. Now, one of the first things that I suggest people buy for their camera and tripod is an L bracket. Okay, the L bracket fits on the Arca Swiss fitting, like so. There you have it, it's very quick and simple. Um, an L bracket, they range from anywhere from 30 bucks up to 250. Uh, you don't have to spend that much, but just get one that's going to suit your camera so you can get to the ports on, on the side of the, of the camera. Uh, if you want to do a portrait, it's very simple, just like that. Perfect, very, very quick, very, very simple. That is an L bracket. And I suggest people get one if you haven't got one, they're very, very good. The next thing that um, I see people doing that uh, attend our workshops is I say to them, how about we just pan the camera to the left, pan it to the right. But what they do, they, instead of working this, what they do, I've noticed, is the camera's on the, on the tripod. So how about we pan to the left or the right? And instead of working that part, the panning part, what they do, they try and drag it this way and they push it that way and they push it that way. They run the risk of uh, tearing the thread out of the quarter thread underneath the base plate of the camera or even damaging the tripod. So don't do that. Um, use this part of your tripod on the ball head. And at the end of the day, we spend so much money on our tripods. And it's got all these wonderful um, knobs and buttons and things. Use it, don't do this you'll end up destroying the thread in the base plate of your camera. So that's no good. Put that over there. Another thing that happens with tripods, and happens to all of them, doesn't matter how much money you spend on them, is that on top, um, you have this, turn around, you have this little screw type thing here. It's an Allen key um, head actually. And that will eventually come loose. There's no doubt about that. That will come loose. Um, so make sure you've got the right Allen key that'll fit that, that Allen, Allen screw head there. And just keep on checking that it doesn't work loose on you. Because if that works loose, then you're rolling all sorts of stripes. So I always carry an Allen key that fits this whole tripod with me in my bag when I'm out and about, uh, out in the field. Another thing that... Um, I've uh, decided to get for the tripod, and that's this. It's a neoprene cover. That actually fits over a 50 mil Canon lens. So I brought a couple of them, and what I do, I use this. And I'll show you. And the reason why I want to, the reason why I want to show you this, and the reason why I use it, if you're banging your way through bush and trees and branches, these ball heads are expensive. Um, you know. So why not protect it? So what I do, I just get the neoprene cover, like so. It's like a wetsuit material. You just stretch it over. Bob's your uncle, there it is. It protects and you tighten it up with the string. You hear that click? That's it. And it protects the ball head from being hit on trees and branches um, when you're walking to your location. So grab yourself a neoprene, neoprene cover, they're about five bucks. Um, protect a four or, five, four or five hundred dollar ball head. Why not you spend five, why wouldn't you spend five dollars? Um, basically, it helps protect it and um, I just think that's a great idea actually, just a little bit of neoprene cover on the top of your tripod. Another thing that um, I must tell you about, when I'm photographing waterfalls or beach scenes or ocean scenes, nine times out of 10, my tripod's in the water. Now, I'll put the camera back on and a lot of people make this mistake and I made the mistake well, many many years ago and that is after you've finished um, photographing your, at your location and you've been in water whether it's fresh water, salt water, a dam or river or whatever the case may be make sure that you get the water out of your tubes these tripods are remarkable 
well they're remarkably clever as how they suck water into the tubes. So what you don't want to do, if you're going to walk around with your, tri with your camera on your tripod, you don't want to do this. Because what happens is, all the water runs down and guess what? Gets into your camera. So what I suggest is you take the camera off, then tip your tripod up, get all the water out of it. Because if you do that with the camera on top, you're in a world of hurt and your camera could be destroyed. So tripods are expensive, but use them correctly and use them properly. Um, just to recap, don't twist your camera on top of your ball head. Release your swivel mount on the ball head like that and turn your camera that way. Um, get the water out, make sure you shake it out that way. All the water comes out. But take your camera off your tripod. Uh, the neoprene covers, ah, very, very good. Goes over the ball head and protects your ball head if you're bashing your way through bush or scrub or whatever the case may be. Uh, an Allen key that's going to fit that screw there because that will eventually come loose. So that's it. Very simple, very simple uh, tips there on how to use your tripod out in the field. Um, it was predominantly aimed at people that have just started photography and brought a, a good tripod. Um, and another thing on tripods, I, I see a lot of people, they spend three and four and five grand on a camera and a, and a, and a lens, and yet they'll spend $100 on a tripod. Well, that's ridiculous. Um, that's like putting a set of used tyres on a $100,000 motor car. Why would you do that? You wouldn't do it. So tripods can be probably half the price of, say, a good camera. I suggest if you're going to buy a tripod, buy the best you can afford because eventually, if you buy a cheaper one, uh, you could run into trouble later on. Your camera could fall, the tripod could fall to bits, and then you're in all sorts of uh, hurt. So. After your camera purchase, a good solid tripod, which will cost you a bit of money, um, I suggest you do that because eventually, if you buy a cheap one, as I said, you'll have to replace it and you'll probably replace three or four when in, in actual fact you could have brought one good one and it would have lasted you probably nearly a lifetime actually. Some of mine have, so that's another free tip there when it comes to tripods. So that's it. That's it for another episode of Sniper Photography on tripods. So. Thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button, the bell next door so you don't miss anything. Um, basically, that's about it. Had a lot of rain this week, so the waterfalls are calling my name. I can hear them calling, and I'll be out there in the next couple of days um, photographing a waterfall with uh, a segment on how to photograph waterfalls, uh, waterfalls, and there's a few good tips there, so keep an eye out for that. But that's it for sniper photography. So as I always say, be nice to yourself, family and friends. But most of all, you keep smiling, keep shooting, and bye for now. See you later.